What do you think of that? <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a, a purple finch or a house finch. I have a hard time telling the difference. He's on the camera right now. <laughs> When I started building this wall, it wasn't to keep anybody out or to keep anybody in. We'd live on a slope and I wanted to make a flat spot in the yard. Oh, I'm sure it would have been easier and quicker just to stack up railroad ties or pressure treated timbers, but I've always enjoyed working with stone, so I decided to do what I enjoy. It was cheaper for me to build a stone wall anyway. The stones I find for free out in the forest, and I even enjoy the process of looking for them. It's therapeutic building a wall like this, good for the mind and body. Yeah, every job's gotta have a foreman. <laughs> Yeah, so there's the stone wall. It's all completed now. All I need to do is go out and find just a few nice choice flat stone just to level off the top. I've got a few low spots that require a few thin stone that I don't have here. But aside from that, it's all done. Comes to a corner and then it goes back to the shed there. And I ended it at that old cherry stump. Mama will probably put one of her little gnomes on that stump over there. <laughs> yeah, so it come out really nice and I'm very happy with it. Like all of my stone projects I always have spots that fit together really nicely where one stone will follow the contour of the other or they stack up really nice. Like that one seats really good on that sloping stone. I love that. Here's another spot there where these fit right nice to that stone. And then a couple of small ones to fill the gap there. Yeah. Yeah, so I've got this almost all backfilled now. 
Got a nice flat area started. Just got a little bit more to do here. Maybe eight loads with the quad would fill that up. That's much nicer than it was before. I really like having that. I got the skirting done on the shed there, so that's all enclosed now. Yeah, looking good. So with the stone wall in place and the flat area above it, another project for the future is we're going to tear off all the old roof in, put a green metal roof on it, extend the chimney up higher. Oh, but this area of the yard is really shaped up. The only thing I wish that I had been a little bit more fussy when I started the project. At the time, I wasn't planning on taking the time to make a nice stone wall. We were digging some rocks out of the yard and I just rolled them down to the low spot there and I just planned on doing like a rough retaining wall, backfilling against it. But I started to do that and then I stood back and I go, you know, I live here. I need to have something that I like to look at. So I ripped it all out and then started going out looking for face stone in the woods, collecting them and working on the wall and pecking away at it a little bit at a time. And it was worth it because I absolutely love it. We sit down here, the fire pit, I look up there full of pride. You know, I love the whole process of doing it and now I can enjoy it and just in which I do. I just sit here and I look at the stones and it makes me feel wonderful. So that's what you got to do. You got to do the things that you love to do, the things that make you happy. Don't listen to people when they tell you what you should do and how you should do things because everyone's different. We're all individuals and we all have our own desires and our own dreams and thoughts of how the of the things that we want you know and uh, too many of us listen to others and we do what others say we should do and then it leaves us with a void inside so like I always say folks follow your heart I followed my heart with the Stonewall project and I'm so happy I did because it came it came out awesome and I love it Well, hey folks, it's time for a little Q&A. Before I get started here, last week I was talking about um, the different terminology that we have these days. And people were sharing stuff with me, which was pretty funny. And uh, I got a, a, a comment that was, all it said was, never saddle a dead horse. And I'm like, that's a weird comment. And then I'm reading all the comments, which I love. I love all the comments that you leave me. And uh, I'm reading, and there's another one, Never Saddle a Dead Horse. I'm going, what the? I'm not up to date on everything, I guess. But then further down, I found maybe, I don't know, 100 comments where people were informing me that I was putting those cable clips on the cable backwards. And I, I never knew that the flat part of those cable clips is called a saddle. And you put that on the live end and not on the loose end of the cable. Okay, I was putting them on like this and they were supposed to be put on like this. So, um, I never knew that. I never claimed to know everything. <laughs> and I don't. So, I learned a little tidbit there. So I went outside to look at the cables that I've been using uh, for probably 20 years. I've got a bunch of different lengths out there. And uh, I checked that, and I have the cable clamps running in all crazy directions. Some I have them two this way and one this way, some are this way, some are this way. They're all crazy. But I've been taking trees down with those darn things for, I don't know, maybe 20 years, so they haven't failed me. But for the cable that I made that day on camera, I think I'm just going to leave those two clamps just the way they are, and I'm going to put two more clamps facing the other way, and I'll be good to go. Yeah. But thank you for the information. I appreciate it. I learn stuff from my subscribers, you know. I do. Quite often. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. This segment's going to be 
primarily about the beavers. A lot of people intrigued with the beavers, the footage I've been sharing over the last couple of years, uh, stuff with the trail cams. Speaking of that, finally got down to check my mail. I ordered three more cameras, okay? Uh, I decided to experiment a little bit. The ones that I had were the Terra 10s. These two are Terra 12s, lights out. The reason why it's called lights out, okay? I'm anxious to try these. If you noticed in, in the footage that I shared, in the nighttime footage, the animal's eyes are glowing and sometimes they're really spooked. They see that red light, this whole area is red lights and it does, it spooks the game. Okay, now these are supposed to stay black. It's got an invisible infrared. So I'm anxious to try these. I bought two of those, and this is the same brand, but another model. I'm just experimenting. And uh, this is the Cloak 14. And this came with the SD card and the batteries, and energize the batteries. So I'm gonna give these a go, and then I will probably do a full review on all the trail cameras that I have. Um, after I've used them for a while. I like to give everything a good honest go of it before I do a review. And I'm going to do the review on that log splitter too because I, I, I didn't want to take it, split a few logs and do a review right away. It's not a fair assessment of the merchandise. So I'm going to do that. And when I checked my mail I got the dozen gloves that I ordered. So yay, no more finger holes. All right, a few questions about the beavers. How do I pick spots to set my trail cameras? Do I put out bait? Well, last winter I had some old food we put out in the woods and I put my trail cameras on it and I got the footage of the coyotes that I shared with you. Remember that, those three coyotes? I got some really nice footage of those. But all the other stuff, I don't put out bait. Um, I set my cameras by instinct, really. I've been kicking around the woods my whole life, and when you do that and you stay observant, you get to know the animal's characteristics. And I use the same strategies to set my trail cameras are as what I use when I'm setting up a tree stand. Okay? I just go by my knowledge of the animal and where I think they're going to go. And I focus on funnel zones and the lay of the land and that sort of thing. Okay? And I just got some great footage this morning when I checked my cameras that I'm going to share. I'm putting footage together, and I'm going to share that with you when I have enough to make it worthwhile to view it. All right. Um, people are asking if I stock the ponds because I'm talking about the beaver making fishing waters. No, I don't stock it. Where I'm talking about the beaver making good ponds for me, or good trout waters for me, it's because these are little trout streams that run through the woods and you'll find little native trout in the streams. You might find a trout that's maybe four or five years old and still only this big because the trout, so Mother Nature makes it this way, they won't grow any bigger than the body of water. So they don't get so big and then there's no water in the little streams. So Mother Nature keeps them all under control. But when the beaver move in and they dam up the creek and they make a pond, you got a bigger body of water and you're going to get bigger fish and you're going to get more fish too. Those are the best eaten ones right there. Those small ones like that, that's exactly what I wanted. When they're confined in a little creek, the otters and the mink prey on them. But when they're in a bigger pond, they got a lot more place to hide. So beavers are very beneficial for me here in the woods. But out in flat farm country where we were in New York, if a beaver moves in and dams up a creek because the terrain is flat, the water spreads out far and wide. So if you have beavers on your property and they keep damming it up, the water's going to spread onto your neighbor's property and beyond and cause a lot of problems and they're not going to be welcome there. And that's, then you have to remove them. But in hill country like this, the beaver dam up a creek, it just fills up a little pocket. And they're great, great to have. Ah, people ask, how can I encourage beaver to take up residency on my property? 
Well, I don't really have anything to suggest, but if you have a waterway going through your property and you have a lot of hardwood trees, um, you've got a good environment for a beaver. If all you have is evergreen trees, you might get a beaver come in and colonize, but he won't stay there for long because he's not going to have a very good food source. He'll eat water plants and grasses and stuff like that throughout the summer, but then he's going to start cutting trees for the fall. And hardwood tree is the best. Poplar is the best. That's their very favorite, poplar tree. So if you get a lot of poplar, you got good beaver country there. Okay. Now, just keep in mind, if you want beavers on your property, yeah, you might be, be, be careful for what you wish for because if you have forests, they're going to be cutting trees down. Okay, They cut the trees down, they eat all the bark off the trees, they eat the limbs, they use the limbs to build their dams, all that stuff. If you're going to have beavers, they're going to be cutting your trees down, so keep that in mind. All righty. All right, over the last couple of weeks, well actually over the last couple of months, I've gotten every little tidbit of medical advice known to man. <laughs> yep, some good, some I've heard of, some bad, and some I've never heard of, okay? And one thing that was recently suggested to me was coffee enemas. Huh. Yeah, and it's, it's what it sounds like. Instead of the coffee going in here, it's going up there. I can't for the life of me think of what, how that is beneficial. There must be something behind it. <laughs> I don't know. But when I was talking about the change in terminology, that's a whole change in terminology for having a coffee to go. <laughs> and if coffee makes you go, that's going to make you go a latte. <laughs> and one last thing. I had a lot of comments over the last few weeks that people say that they were subscribed to my channel and now they're unsubscribed. And they didn't unsubscribe. And I probably a few hundred people have said that. I don't know what's going on with my channel or if it's something going on with YouTube, but if you are a YouTuber and you have a channel of your own and that is happening to you and you know anything about it, sh share it with me because I don't know what the heck's going on with it. Yeah. I don't know. Funky stuff going on with YouTube. So, that is it for now, folks. Got to head to Home Depot tomorrow and get some more lumber. We got the floor to the screen porch framed up yesterday. And uh, I'm going to get the walls up in the next day or two. So, that is it for now. You enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And all the best to you. And God bless. Frank and the boss out of walking in the woods Living life happy and free Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the Boss